Hi everyone, this is Gavin from Gavin's Gadgets. This is the LG V50 ThinQ. This is my camera review. I'm going to go through the camera app. This is the front camera at 30 frames per second, 1080p. This is the maximum resolution. And go go through all the different modes, show you some examples of all the different camera modes. And at the end, there's over 100 and about 20, 130 photos. We're going to look at those as well. Anyway, let's go check everything out. So now we're going to go through the camera app and just run through some of the options. So I'm in auto, you can have filters here by pressing that button. And in the settings, if we go through some settings, you can have Google Lens suggestions. Um, when it's found in auto mode, it picks it up. HDR, and you can have the options there, quite straightforward HDR. Stereo recording, that doesn't come on. At 4K60, I've got uh, footage for all that. Uh, live photo, if you want that. Voice shutter, tracking focus, tag lo tag locations, add signature, uh, so you can do that. And you can change the storage. I always like um, saving to internal storage. I have got a 512 gig micro SD card here. You can select the resolutions of the video. This is in auto, so you can see all the options that you have here. Quite a decent array of options. And same for photo, you can then adjust the photos here and you can go full vision and you've got the timer settings. So the settings are very easy to use. Here you can switch between um, two times optical, standard and wide. But what you do have, if you see the shutter, you can move very, very smooth or faster. Go back, go all the way up to 10 times, which I don't recommend. Two times is fine, down to the wide, or you can just jump as you see fit. Now I've customized my ones, so I've got, you can adjust night mode as well, I've got different options there on night mode. Triple shot, auto, AI cam, which is very marginal, and then you can hit more. Now the reason I've only got a few options here, is I want to be able to get to all of them very quickly. When you first have it, there are a lot more options, but this is not the fastest at changing mode. So it's quicker to stick as many other modes as you need in the actual more section that you can jump to them quickly. So you've got slow-mo, if you jump to slow-mo, and you can use ultra-wide as well. And the entire video will be in slow motion, so that's nice and easy to do that. And go to more. You've got manual video, manual camera, I'll jump to those in a second. Cine shot, if you go to cine shot, Start by recording a video while keeping the camera still. And that allows you to blur just a part of them, one part of it. Um, pretty clever, pretty clever stuff. Um, panorama, time-lapse, food, don't need food, pen to shot. I'll show you some examples of that. Portrait, story shots. Uh, portrait allows you to adjust the background blur afterwards. Um, here, um, you take a photo of the background to insert or insert a background and then it puts your face um, into that background. Um, I'll show you an example, sample of that as well. Uh, yeah. Cine video. Cine video is really quite nice. So here you've got the different options here. You can have some and you can have none. You can change the vinaigrette. So you can here you can just create a whole different stylish look. Um, that is very straightforward there. Um, so let's just come out of that. And you've also got here a uh, touch an area and drag the slider to zoom. So quite useful in that respect. Uh, and that's again really smooth. Got some samples on that as well. Um, the studio flash jump out. Um, the photo has taken every three seconds save as GIF file. Very, very straightforward. Um, I actually have triple shot here because I quite like that, um, that particular option. Wait a minute, just jumped out of the camera. Out. Uh, what else have we got? A YouTube Live 360 AR stickers. So this is using um, Google's uh, play, Playgrounds. What I'm going to do now is jump into the photo gallery. Right, so this is a 360 panorama shot that I took here. And you can actually move your phone or you can actually, um, so you can move 
you can't with demonstration cam, but if you turn on the spot, you can move around as it. But that's really, really nice quality, um, just to show you that. Obviously, I couldn't show that in real life on the video. Cine video, so this is what a sample of the Cine video going. It's just a really, just to show you, and it's an HDR 10, I must add as well. Um, so you've got that quickly. Um, some more panoramas, pen to shot. So this is the five uh, shots that you've done. So if you tap on that, it shows you the five shots it took in quick succession. You can make a collage. So if you do here, and you can change the different options. So wherever you like, really. Just come out and make a GIF as well. Just have a bit of fun there. So you can play that. And you can change the ratio and the speed. Good for Instagram, I would say. Very nice for Instagram. Um, portraits, so the portraits, you can do that. And then after fact, you can adjust the blur, less, more. And it's not too bad. Um, if I just, okay. And you look, it's cut me out pretty well, to be honest. So there's that. And then you've got triple shots. So if I pick one here, so here's, it takes three shots in quick succession. And what you can then do, you can, you can save each individual shot or you can create some effects. So here you can see some of the different things. So if you just play, gives you an idea how it combines three. Well, you've got, for example, a different option. I quite like that. I really do. So what I'll do is there's my uh, LG camera roll here that I want to show you and just find them wherever they are. Um, somewhere right. You know I said about putting a, put yourself in the background where you take a shot and then it takes a photo of you. Well, this is it. And you can see it has cut out um, and it's not perfect, but it was a bit of fun doing that, i got to say. Um, and also in some of the other front, uh, some of the portrait modes, you've got some of the special colors, background, you know, like um, lighting effects that you can have. Um, here you can actually put yourself in a completely different color background. Um, is it perfect? No, that's not too bad though. Um, and that does all work really well. Um, I think this is a triple shot. Yeah, so you've got another triple shot here. But um, so obviously one of the key features here of the phone is all the manual modes. So you've got shutter speed here. You've got everything. Let's just do that. And you've got everything from, you can do one over 3,200 up to 30 seconds, ISO from 50. And if you look at the other end, it's 3,200 as well. Um, you can alter the EV, EV, manual focus, got controls there with focus peaking. Now, if you're doing macro shots, you absolutely do need to have this in manual mode. You cannot do as your focus peaking. You cannot do macro in auto, do not know why. And here also, um, you've got the Kelvin scale for white balance and your histogram, nice and easy. But let's we'll get through it all. If I go back into manual camera, what you also have is the graphy. So you can have different preset styles and looks that are ready to go when you want to take photos. Tons and tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of options. Very impressive. So let's just do manual camera because this is where this absolutely goes crazy. So manual camera. First of all, you can have manual control for all these frame rates from 1, 2, 24, 30, 60, 120, and 240. That's pretty impressive. You can have the bit rate from high, medium, and low. You can have hi-fi audio as well. And I have tried to do some samples on that. Let's just put it down to 30 frames. 
and you can have also you have HDR10 as well. So a steady recording, um, lots and lots of different options in manual for the video. Now let's just put white balance to something a bit more realistic. But you've got full control of white balance, focus, and this is video, don't forget, EV, ISO, shutter speed. Um, so you've got everything manual control. Very, very powerful. Now I'm going to show you some actual video. I'm going to cut to video samples, photo samples, and then I'll uh, give you a summary at the end. So this is the rear camera, 1080p, 30 frames per second, all handheld, all original audio, all untouched, just really to give you an idea of what it's like. It's absolutely raining, it's a horrible day. And the click pan. So here we are, this is 1080p, and this is handheld, and we're at 60 frames per second. Just trying to give you an idea of me walking. This does have stabilization at 60 frames per second. I'm just going to spin around. See the bus. So this is 4K at 30 frames per second. There is 4K at 60 frames per second, still stabilized. At 4K 60. There isn't the stabilization. And there we go, it's 4K 30 frames per second. Now this is 4K at 60 frames per second. The maximum limit is six minutes at 4K 60, and at 4K 30, your maximum is 10 minutes of recording. Let's do a quick round. It's very smooth, very good quality. Now, if you start before recording video with the ultra wide selected, you can then switch and jump between the different options and also you've got you can zoom in very smoothly on that and this is manual video and this is HDR 10 you can also have hi-fi quality audio as an option in HDR10, the maximum you've got is at 30 frames per second using HDR10. You can also adjust for wind noise. There's a wind noise filter. Let's put that on, see if that makes any difference. And I'll just turn it off again to give you an idea. But you've got full control of so much more. So this is HDR10. I won't actually touch this up just to give you an idea. So it just is 60 frames per second. Again, you can adjust everything, white balance, shutter speed, and this is manual control, 24 megabits per second, hi-fi audio. And you can also adjust the bit rate and have a higher bit rate for even better, higher quality. But probably YouTube loses some of this. So what I've done here is I've got a load of photos and I've got from the Huawei P30 Pro and Samsung Galaxy S10 and you'll see when it says Samsung that is for the uh, Galaxy S10 and this is the um, Snapdragon 855. So here you can see uh, first shot and that's the wide angled from the ultra wide from the Samsung. So here is the Huawei and if I skip to that is the LG. Now, if you look at them, the difference is that the LG is slightly um, brighter, but if you go quickly back, um, that's you know slightly more darker in terms of exposure, and that's the Samsung. Obviously, the brickwork's looking really good here as well. 
Uh, if I go back to the LG, as you can see, sorry, that's the Huawei, and oh, that's the LG. It's got a brighter 1.5, but this can all be corrected um, very easily if you want it slightly uh, darker, less bright afterwards. And to be honest, when you look, if you could do the wide angle, that's Huawei uh, Ultra Wide. That's the L, um, LG V50 Ultra Wide. And there we go, that's the Samsung Ultra Wide. There's hardly any differences in this, and it's all personal preference. Obviously, the Samsung is really wide, it's ultra wide, and the LG has the least ultra wide, but it still captures everything you need to in the frame and actually has less distortion. So, in a number of shots, I do prefer how the LG looks. So, moving forward, this is uh, uh, Huawei, and that is the ultra wide from the Huawei, um, and there is the standard lens. Um, this is the LG ultra wide. Um, again, because it's it's if you look back here, um, they are all pretty good and pretty similar. Um, this is the LG uh, normal lens. It's an f 1.5. I think it's an excellent shot. And you look between the Huawei here and the LG, you hardly tell. Now to Samsung's got a slightly yellower tinge, slightly better dynamic range, very marginally um, on the Samsung. But again. All these shots, these are untouched, and the differences between them is so hard to tell. So, uh, Huawei Ultra Wide, Huawei Normal shot, um, LG Ultra Wide, LG Normal, Samsung uh, Ultra, uh, Samsung Normal, Samsung Ultra Wide. And actually, here I don't like the Ultra Wide because it, it, it bends it too much. So, if I had a choice on the um, Ultra Wide. I actually do like the LG, and if I look at the um, Huawei, it's very good. I think Huawei does does quite a good job here overall. But again, the differences, none of them are bad. You know, it's personal, personal, personal preference. Huawei here, um, this is the ultra wide. Um, yeah, it's okay. Doesn't quite do it for me. That's a bit nicer. That's a standard lens. Uh, Samsung, again, really, really wide. And maybe too wide, but it does capture more in standard. That's actually a really good shot. So you go back to the Huawei and then you compare the Samsung. I prefer the Samsung. Picks up the sun glow that was actually on that building because it was a particular time of day. And then if you look at the LG, again, because it's not too wide, you get less barrel distortion and that looks quite nice. And that's the LG here. Um, again, if you compare that to the Samsung, very, very similar. And probably a better balance between that and well, and the Huawei. But again, nitpicking here. So now let's look at some really hard shots that we have. So let's just do the two LG. So this is LG. This is in a dark, dark. It's just test night mode. So this is standard auto, and this is actually um, night mode. Not much difference in it. That sign is in night mode is the most readable out of two. We double click in to have a look out of all three. But only just look at the glass um you know the, that's what it looks like and now we're in the, are we in the same room look how bright this is this is night mode on the um, s10 the night mode works very well on the s10 and that's standard auto um night standard auto so if you look at that night mode and look at the lg you can see you've got more detail but it depends if you want something to look like daylight with lots of um, information, then this night mode works very well. And I think this is where, you know, it's personal preference, um, but no denying there's a lot of information. So let's look at the Huawei shots now. Let's just go here. So this is Huawei night mode versus Samsung night mode. Um, which do you prefer? much closer than you think now Samsung's got the dedicated night mode and that's auto so here's the Huawei auto now let's just jump all the way to the LG auto and let's go back again and as you can see they look fairly close this is quite interesting Huawei Samsung and that is LG I don't know why the, phone, the uh, thing's not showing the data let's go back again so that's the LG, that's Samsung, and that's Huawei. Very different, 
you tell me which one you prefer. I didn't move, I'm in the same spot. There we go. So this is another three different lenses. So here we have ultra wide from the LG. Then we have the standard, which is quite nice. Quite well balanced. And zoom, there's a bit of blotchy, bad processing there. But just wait to see what the others do. So now we're on the Samsung Auto. What a blotch. Is this the same place? I mean, just look at the difference here. LG, if I go back to the LG, the grass on the Samsung is so much green. I don't know if it's coming through on the lens. And ultra wide, very good uh, ultra wide here from the Samsung. And zoom, there we go. And this is five times optical zoom from the uh, Huawei, which obviously does have that ability to do that. That's what that looks like. I don't quite like how it looks. In fact, I don't like any of these shots from any of the phones. I think they're okay, but they struggled with all the green and the trees and the leaves and the grass. And this is the Huawei um, Ultra Wide, and that's the Huawei standard shot. Um, so just uh, Ultra Wide, Zoom. That's Samsung Normal, Samsung Ultra Wide, Samsung Zoom. That's the LG, uh, zoom, two times optical zoom, standard, and ultra wide. If you notice here, and if we go back to the Samsung ultra wide a second, you'll notice that it's got better dynamic range in the very corners there. But again, very, very close. So let's pick even a harder shot. Here's, here's just one shot. Auto, Samsung, uh, Huawei, LG, Huawei, Samsung, can you tell the difference between them? Uh, personally, I prefer the LG, um, Samsung second, Huawei third. But again, it's, you know, I'm nitpicking. Um, this was hard. These all struggled big time to try and get any shots out of this. This with a white wall behind. This is the LG. Um, you can do some pretty interesting depth field, or natural or auto on standard lens. Uh, this is the Huawei. Um, again, not very clear, you know, this has got more blur and it's got a tiny bit in focus, whereas here it was just struggling. This is the best of a, of a bunch, by the way. And the Samsung, again, this looks slightly more punchy, slightly focused, but again, didn't look what I was seeing in London work, but it's just to show you. And that is the comparison on the three different phones.